Welcome to VMware Cloud Provider Hub. In this session, we will demonstrate how to enable vRealize Automation Cloud on Cloud Provider Hub. VRA Cloud is a single offering that comprises of three modules, Cloud Assembly, Service Broker, and CodeStream. Service Broker is the consumption and governance interface. It's a self-service portal for end users with project-based policies to manage resource access and utilization centrally. Cloud Assembly is VMware's author. It allows partners to connect cloud accounts to assemble cloud agnostic or cloud-specific blueprints in a declarative infrastructure as code editor or as a drag-and-drop graphical interface. CodeStream is the application and infrastructure release pipeline component of vRealize Automation Cloud. A cloud provider can consume VRA Cloud on Cloud Provider Hub using the standard VMware Cloud Provider Program, VCPP, commit contract structure. It is a consumption-based service and is billed in arrears. For the purpose of this demonstration, we're going to cover how Cloud Assembly can be used to manage blueprints and infrastructure endpoints for your tenants, with Service Broker providing a catalog. We start this demo in Cloud Provider Hub as a provider, Acme, managing services for their tenant, Tango. The provider continues to manage services, and once the provider logs in, he's going to see the Cloud Assembly and Service Broker tiles already enabled, with CodeStream available for provisioning. As a provider, you have full control as to what service tiles you want to expose to your tenant, as well as the level of access you want to grant. However, please ensure that the Cloud Assembly service tile is enabled, as subscription creation is done through there. In this case, the provider picks the Cloud Assembly user permission and continues. Once he logs back into the tenant organization, he can open Cloud Assembly and manage blueprints and infrastructure endpoints through the service itself. As we open Cloud Assembly, the provider lands in the Deployments tab, which has all of the blueprints set up and deployed. The following infrastructure endpoints available through Cloud Accounts can be used to provision actual blueprints. And as you can see, there's a wide range of endpoints supported, all the way from hyperscalers to vCenter SDDCs. You can also use flavor mappings, image mappings, network profiles, and storage profiles to provide extensive levels of configurability, as well as cloud zones to dictate what resources can be used by each project. Next, we go to Blueprints, under which we can see the list of blueprints available for this tenant across all of their projects. Open one of these to see a simple GUI editor, as well as a YAML text-based editor that can be used to create and update blueprints. Let's go to the Service Broker and see how these blueprints are exposed to the tenants. As a provider, when you open up Service Broker, you can see all of the catalog items that are available. Each catalog item can be associated with one or more projects, which then dictates what a tenant user can see. Once we go into content, we can see how these catalog items are imported into Service Broker. When you select the New button, you can see that you, as a provider, can import content from a range of sources, all the way from Cloud Assembly Blueprints itself to Cloud Formation Templates, Orchestrator Workflows, and SDDC VM Templates. Once you've imported content from these sources, you can choose which projects are shared amongst the tenants. In this case, let's open up a marketing project for this Tango tenant and then share the WordPress blueprint that we saw earlier. You have full control to pick and choose what specific catalog items you want to share with what project, where project is a group of users. It is really flexible in terms of what kind of templates are exposed to what groups of users, and you can also dictate policies that act on blueprint deployments. You can either choose a lease policy, which dictates how long a resource is kept up and running before it's terminated automatically, or a day two action policy, which dictates what types of users with what roles can perform operations on the deployed resources. All this is a provider admins view, but once we switch to a tenant view, we can see that the tenant can only see the catalog items he's enabled for, and he can't see any configuration tabs. So, once this blueprint is requested, all the tenant has to do is to provide a deployment name, as well as a set of parameters that can be controlled and configured as part of the blueprint process. Once these parameters are filled out, the tenant has to hit Submit, 
and this blueprint will be submitted for deployment. In a few moments, you can see that the blueprint will complete its deployment process with the resources exposed to the customer. Under the Deployment tab, you can see the resource endpoints, the time period, as well as the lease period, all listed as part of the Deployment tab. This concludes our demonstration on how Cloud Assembly can be used to manage blueprints and infrastructure endpoints for your tenants, with Service Broker providing a catalog. To learn more about the latest updates and other capabilities of VMware Cloud Provider Hub, visit our website at cloud.vmware.com slash cloudproviderhub. Thank you.